Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video here in the early access event for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Today we are revisiting the Sultai self-mill archetype, which recently picked up Cruel Somnophage in Wilds of Eldraine, but now through the descent mechanic has even more toys to work with, and one of the new payoffs is Souls of the Lost. As an additional cost to cast it, we have to either discard a card or sacrifice a permanent, but as it turns out, that is often an advantage, since that's a way of enabling descent and putting additional cards into our graveyard, and then the souls have power equal to the number of permanent cards in our graveyard and toughness equal to that number plus one. So it not only counts our creatures but also other permanents such as our lands which make up a large part of our deck. So they're quickly going to outgrow the Somnophage and Urborg Lurgoif which are two other very important creatures here that can put additional cards into our graveyard and also grow with the number of creatures. Lurgoif only counting our creatures whereas Somnophage also tracks the opponents. And then we have the four copies of Stalactite Stalker, which is a 1-1 Goblin with Menace. Beginning of our end step, if we descend it this turn, put a plus one counter on it, which means if we put a permanent card into our graveyard from anywhere, so it could be that we discarded one, could be that a creature traded ended up in the graveyard, or could be that we maybe milled a few cards. So those are all ways to enable descend. And then we can sacrifice a Stalker for three mana at any point and give a creature minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is the Stalactite Stalker power so that can also scale nicely as the game progresses just wanted to have some additional one drops to play since we have so many powerful two mana plays that it's still nice to be able to curve out a bit better and that's also why I'm playing two copies of Annoying Vermin. Not an especially powerful creature, but it does mill two cards when it enters, so it can start filling the graveyard, and when it dies, can shrink something else down, so it can maybe take out some one toughness creatures from the opponent after maybe sacrificing it to our own Souls of the Lost. And then we also have four copies of Blanchwood Prowler, which can mill additional cards into our graveyard and maybe help hit our land drops as well. And speaking of land drops, we also have two new creature lands, which fit in perfectly here. The Restless Reef turns into a 4-4 with Death Touch, and when it attacks, target player mills four cards, so that can also help enable some of our synergies. Then we've got two copies of Old Stick Fingers, which we can also sink additional mana into to put additional creatures into our graveyard, and also scales the more creatures we have. And then at 3 mana we've got a few more goodies. Tyvar is perfect in this strategy as it can get back our various 2 mana creatures, especially Souls of the Lost, in which case we don't even need to sacrifice a permanent or discard a card, and can also help untap those creatures. And then we've got two copies of the Myco Tyrant. Whereas our deck mostly goes tall with very large creatures, the Myco Tyrant helps us go wide by making fungus tokens equal to the number of cards we descended into our graveyard, and then also grows with the number of fungus and saplings we control. And then we've got two copies of the Seething Tower, which is a fungus itself, and this one tracks Descent 4 and Descent 8, so this can turn into a 5-5 Trampler or a 7-7 Trampler that's difficult to block if we have enough permanents in the graveyard. And of course every single card in our deck is a permanent, which is quite useful. And then I'm also trying out two copies of the Overflowing Well, not a must-have in the deck by any means, but seemed fun as a card that will mill two cards and draw two when it enters. And then if we enable Descent 8, which is pretty easy for us, then at the beginning of our upkeep it will transform into the myriad pools which can then make mana and if we cast a permanent spell using the mana produced by the pools up to one other target permanent we control becomes a copy of that spell until end of turn so we can maybe turn a gnawing vermin or stalker into a large souls of the lost which can then deal a ton of damage could also try to play Jace as another self mill card, although double blue can be a little bit tricky on our mana since we're mainly a black green deck. Could also play the new Ancient One, which is a 2 mana 8-8 eight eight that can only attack and block if we have enough cards in Graveyard, and there's some other shenanigans you can potentially pull off with it. Definitely gonna build some decks around it at some point, maybe involving Obnixilus or potentially some other fight rigging combos, but I left it out of this build for now and focusing on some other synergies instead. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Missing blue mana, but we can likely find it with Prowler. So, looks like a keep. Turn three, we have a few options. Between the Seething Tower or maybe kicking a Lurgoif. Up against an aggressive red-green deck. I hope to find some blue mana, or at the very least, a painless black source. There we go. 
Two pain lanes against aggro is not ideal, but we'll make it work. So now I'm liking kicked Lurgoif. And then turn after we can mill with the Summon of Age and play it. While growing Lurgoif. And then get down a large Trampler. Kumano transforms. This can also exile some of our creatures. So that can be a form of graveyard hate as well in this matchup. So very decent start for the red-green aggro deck. Adaptive grows Beast Caller. And Scout, the new one drop, gets to explore, finds another adaptive on top. So in this matchup we should be able to outgrow the opponent's creatures after a while. But initially they're going to be on the beatdown. So I think stick to the plan. Could also play Prowler and then just play Somnophage um, as an extra creature. I think I still prefer Mill and then play Somnophage. And hopefully end up with a large Lurgoif and a large Somnophage. Our opponent also put Adaptive in the graveyard, which helps. For now, I'm gonna play defense. The next turn we can think about attacking. So already our creatures are competing with the Beast Caller that they played on turn two with turn one etching getting a counter and then followed up with two more one drops. So it's not like the Beast Caller could be much bigger. Stormseeker probably won't be attacking himself. Still happy to trade for the Beast Caller while we can. So, could just trade for Lurgoif, since Somnophage also grows off the opponent's graveyard. Uh, double block would be a little bit safer in the face of a small green pump spell. Could also jump with Prowler technically, so we don't have to worry about the counters being moved around. And then we can attack back for kind of a healthy amount, play Prowler, and then another Somnophage. That's also not unreasonable, actually. Because if I trade now, they do get to move the counters. Which doesn't necessarily help our cause. And now Tyvar could get back Souls of the Lost, which is awesome. So maybe start with Prowler, since I don't have double black here to play Somnophage. This could maybe pick up a Painless... Uh, black source. Could argue that playing Seething Tower is more important than getting the souls in play. But the souls blocks pretty well. 14, 15, I guess 13 power now. And these two can attack. Would leave me with two blockers at 11 life. It's still a little bit risky. So maybe I only send Somnophage. Because we do have to take haste into account. Opponent jumps. And if we get to untap with Tyvar, we can also untap or a creature after attacking with it. And yeah, that's going to be too much for the opponent to handle. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not perfect, but keepable. Can't play Stalker on turn one. But our mana should still be fine here. So, can't quite double Stalker. So... Could see myself going with a Somnophage now, just milling myself. And then next turn I can go Stalker plus Prowler. And 
that Tyvar can also get some two drops back, such as Souls of the Lost. Creature, two for Death Touch. Okay, so it would be nice to have something that can trade for Preacher. So going Tyvar, get back Souls is an option. Although if they have removal, they get to take out my Planeswalker as well. I guess that's still okay. If I go Stalker plus Prowler, our opponent gets to both draw and make a Vampire. Maybe I should have gone for the Pain Land to be at less life. Although, then they would still get to draw a card. So, yeah, close call. I guess we'll double spell here. And then next turn we can play another Stalker and Tyvar. Could have uh, tried to sequence Prowler first in case we picked up a fast land and then still play Stalker afterwards. Opponent had the cut down. And we'll take two. Alright, let's double spell. And then next turn we can play Summon of Age, plus maybe another Tyvar. A nice 9-10. With no real drawback. Hope they can't easily remove it. Restless Cottage could also try and shrink down our graveyard. But not a concern right now. And then Tyvar untapping souls could also give it pseudo vigilance. So for now, could let Tyvar go since I have another one. Could just take the trade since we can get the souls back. And Shieldred's next. Alright. Take our draw. So we can go for doubly kick to Lurgoif plus a tap to Dark Slick Shores. Seems reasonable. And pass it back. Stalker grows. And a Terra Sunder just to take care of Tyvar, that's fine. Outcome. Okay, so can attack with Lurgoif. And then we'll end up going for Tyvar and Somnophage, so probably want a Tyvar first. Since that's pretty likely to grow the Tarmogoyf. I guess it stays the same. Souls now 18 power. Okay. Stalker grows once again. And next turn we can maybe get it large enough where it can eventually finish off Shieldred. And then there's also the Restless Reef that we can activate. 4-4 four, four with Death Touch can also attack past Shieldred. Okay, the Dracosaur is scary. Can provide card advantage. And can also block our uh, Restless Reef. Well, well, well. So that's active and is going to transform next turn. And picked up another Souls. We're down to 8. Okay, so what happens if I were to sacrifice Stalker on Shieldreds? That's going to chump Souls, and then our opponent would still take... Uh, let's see here, because Summon of Age and Lorgoth would both grow. 
So that would be 19 damage, not quite lethal. So I think we just send the big guys and keep Stalker back for now. And then I'm likely going for Souls sacrificing maybe a Prowler and then play a Lurgoif. So I guess I could do that now. So we get to grow our creature some more. I do get to untap one of my creatures as well. And I'll just play this now. Down to seven. And next turn Stalker could take out the Drakosaur if we're still alive. We are dead to another shield root, maybe a reason not to play the extra Lurgoif, so I would stay at eight. Although I guess we would have been able to use Stalker in upkeep, since we can use this at any point to take out a shield root. Okay, so we can animate Restless Reef and attack. And that does it. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got a very awkward opener with both copies of Restless Reef and no green mana. Gonna have to mulligan. This is not much better. Two tapped lands, no green mana. Alright, we'll try this. And then... Probably get rid of a land, and then rely on Prowler to find a third. Souls of the Lost could definitely do some work. Maybe sacking the Prowler after playing it. Opponent with an Invasion of Argamon. And discarding Crocs and Kunoros, so... Definitely points towards a reanimator deck. Did find a land. So we could try Micro Tyrant on three. Hope it survives so we can start making tokens. So Crocs and Kunuros, when it enters. And he stacks all a bunch of stuff from their graveyard, so that's not currently the case. Yeah, I think we try a Micro Tyrant. And then pass for now. Next turn, could go for Souls, sacking Prowler or discarding a card. Tunnel Grinder can also discard a bunch of cards here. And Galta discarded, so that's what we're gonna try and reanimate. Potentially next turn already. Okay, so... Going for Souls. And then... Maybe just discarding a land at this point, since we have so many. I guess we can discard the pain land, play tapped shores. And then if they answer souls, we'll gladly get it back with Tyvar. If not, we can blindly minus two. Oof, breach the multiverse. Well, I guess that's gonna grow our creatures as well. So souls now 13 power. But our opponent can also get one back from my graveyard. And opponent found Itali or Galta. Let's 
going to be Hitali plus Souls. Hitting Prowler and Charming Scoundrel. That could have been worse. Well, we've got our work cut out for us. So now the opponent's soul's bigger than mine. But we can get another one back with Tyvar. Sadly, my quit tyrant only triggers at the beginning of our end step. Annoying vermin. It's not gonna do a whole lot here, but still gonna mill a few more cards. Don't actually have a ton of creatures to get back. Okay. So now we're 16, 17. Do we want to attack? Yeah, I guess it's fine. Opponent probably trumps. Still have another large souls on defense. Vermin can trump as well. And with Tyvar we can untap our souls after attacking. So yeah, this turn wasn't too bad for us. They will be able to transform the grinder, so that can set up a powerful play next turn. So I could play souls, sacking vermin to shrink down the opponent's souls. So we have a better time attacking. And then get in. And then plus Tyvar to untap. And then next turn we could potentially minus once again. And then we're getting close to just attacking with everyone. But yeah, we'll see what the Tunnel Grinder can reveal. Only works on permanent spells. But another Itali will do. So yeah, opponent's going off. Finding Hunger Dominus. Although we can pretty easily block... A 14 powered Itali. Old Stick Fingers, not bad. And a bitter reunion could also give their team haste. But uh, we should have enough blockers. So yeah, the game goes on. So opponent gets to double power and toughness each turn. Which includes our turn if we go to attackers. It looks like they might be going all out here. Don't think that's going to work out, so jump here. Take out Stick Fingers. Can block Jewel Thief, and then we should have them on the way back. Alright. They might have been able to survive another turn if they stayed back, but I can understand them wanting to make a move since the tokens were starting to take over on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is missing a green mana, so I don't think we can keep, sadly. Okay, this is better. One land can go. Make it a Lenor Wastes. And then turn to either a mill with Prowler or with Somnophage. Let's go with the Somnophage, so I can maybe get that down next turn. Tyvar can get back Souls of the Lost. And turn to Foundry. Could also double spell Stalker and Prowler here. But, uh, yeah, let's get this Tyvar in play. Find another Souls.
And Braided Net can keep our large creatures in check pretty easily. Okay, Poseju potentially an answer to a key artifact. So for now, I guess play Prowler and then Stalker. Or we could go for Somnophage as well. Tyvar can untap my creatures, but not within the time frame that we need to attack with them. So let's go ahead and untap the soul and play Somnophage. And then next turn I could maybe Busage with the Braided Net before attacking. If they tap a creature down, we just untap with Tyvar. Glyph Bridge, thanks to the ramp from Foundry, clears two of my creatures. That's too bad. And there's another Lurgoif. So we can double spell, attack. And then save Buseju for next turn, maybe. Stalker picks up a counter. And the Millennium Calendar, the opponent's win condition perhaps. Glyph Bridge once again leaves us with a single Prowler, that's unfortunate. And they're gonna use Braided Net on Tyvar, interesting. Okay, so we won't be able to activate it to get back our uh, Souls of the Lost. But we did find another Tyvar. So that could work. Let's pound these little monstrosities into dust. Never give up. We can win. Souls are getting quite large. Attack for one, and then let's see here. Craft with artifacts. I think you can only do as a sorcery, so I'm probably going to Buseju it in their turn. Now the Foundry can still potentially get rid of some of these Glyph Bridges to then get access to the Braided Net. So things are kind of complicated. Points good another Net, hmm, that's a problem. So now dealing with one of them isn't really a great solution. So I can Busage you a net and then untap with Tyvar, forcing them to use another net. I guess I may as well do it now. Another Tyvar. Souls is gonna get tapped. Don't have priority to untap our souls with Tyvar just yet. And the spring loaded saw blades are gonna take care of the prowler. Okay. So the nut has been depleted, but uh, there's still one in the graveyard that they can access with Foundry. So if I play another Tyvar, I can just get back another Souls here, which is probably the play. <laughs> this will be quick. Your story's not finished yet. And then hopefully one of them can connect. Now there's still the creature line, of course, that can block. But I need to deal with both souls. And yeah, our opponent can only really handle one of them, and that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Ideally, we find another 2-drop, so I can go Stalker, play the 2-drop, maybe stick fingers on 3, and then doubly kick Lurgoyf on 4. That would be a nice curve. All right, there we go. So turn to Lanor Waste, play Prowler. Think that's still better than playing another Stalker. Although I could go Stalker plus tapped Restless Reef. And then next turn maybe Stick Fingers for one, then Lurgoyf and then Prowler. So we start growing both Stalkers. Yeah, maybe that's still the play here. Could also go for Lurgoyf and just kick it once. Yeah, especially now with another one coming up. So, hit for two. Our opponent off to a pretty slow start. We see Sunken Citadel, so they might have some cave synergies. Okay, so once again, quite a few options. Mill with Somnophage, plus play it, versus doubly kick Lurgoyf. I think I still prefer Lurgoyf just because it's going to mill more cards. The opponent doesn't have any creatures in Graveyard right now. So we'll start here. And smash. So next turn we are presenting Lethal. Opponent will need a sweeper here. And Bat Colony making three blockers. We'll buy them sometime. So these still have menace, so they can chump chump. And then fall to two life. If I had a land for animating Restless Reef, that might have been the play. Now I guess we play the well. And then I leave green mana untapped. I can still play Prowler afterwards, most likely. Could also Prowler and then uh, maybe play the well after picking up a land. But uh, kind of want to see if we can transform this and maybe copy some permanence. So just going to attack and play Somnophage. And then next turn, if we transform Everflowing Well, I can turn a Stalker into another Somnophage. And then it will still have those plus one counters, which could be kind of fun. And attack. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Turn two. Could mill with Somnophage. We're not in a hurry to play Prowler since we have plenty of lands. And then I guess play Tapped Cascade for now. Turn one Teething Wormlets, an artifact deck. Right, already milled three creatures. And Gala Greeters on two, nice follow-up to the Wormlet. Alright, so don't have the most mana-efficient turn here, but we'll just get the Somnophage out there. Next turn can mill and play another one. Wormlet will gain Death Touch once they have enough artifacts in play. And they already have two. Okay, Seething Tower could give us a decent play for next turn. For now, I think it's still mill with Somnophage. And then attack. Alright, milled four creatures, so already a 7-7.
Poseidon could potentially destroy an artifact to take away Death Touch at instant speed, so that could be a relevant interaction. Thousand Moons Smithy can make a very large token. And they could already try and transform it, but that would leave them quite vulnerable. So yeah, an 8-8. Luckily we have a Boseju in hand. So that's going to help. Although Wormlet will still have Death Touch. So I can play Seething Tower as a legendary, so this only costs 1 mana. I'll blow up the token, attack, I'm fine with the trade for Wormlet. I think that's the move. Even though we're not dealing with the smithy itself. Just gotta keep up the pressure. And if they're forced to trade away their creatures, the tokens also become less scary. And then next turn we could add a few more threats to the board. One's gonna take it down to three, so now every single creature could be lethal. And yeah, looks like our opponent is going to transform Smithy, maybe play another one to start making huge tokens. The early Gala Greeters definitely put in some work. Now it does enter tapped, so they can't immediately start making extra tokens. Maybe something they had not taken into account. Alright, so we're just going to attack all out here. And if they can't deal with the Trampler, they're going to be dead. Alright, so we got to see this new take on Sultai Self Mill in action. Definitely a deck that can still be fine-tuned some more, but I'm definitely liking the new addition of Souls of the Lost. Gives the deck another powerful 2-drop that can also potentially enable some of the Descent synergies. The 1-mana Descent creature also seemed okay, just to give us another early play that can kind of scale as the game goes on. Also gives the deck a little bit of interaction, now that we don't really have any other interactive creatures in the deck. And of course, Tyvar has been amazing as a way to get back souls and our other various 2-drops, while also milling more cards and maybe helping untap those creatures to have them back on defense. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!